Okay, so some viewers in the past have asked about the uh, labeling that we use on the cabinets and uh, just very recently we had a uh, somebody post a question about um, about the labeling that we use and really it's it's not uh, too complicated and you know you can put whatever kind of labeling you want on your gear uh, but what we use is a uh, vinyl lettering uh, right here right here every place down here that you see here this is all vinyl lettering and we used to use uh, paint like in a stencil but the problem was is that as the cabinets were used the paint would get scraped and then we had to come in and try to patch up some of the paint never worked out so we're just using vinyl lettering now just to keep things marked just to show that uh, the equipment belongs to us and the good thing about the, the vinyl lettering is that now you can tell us F is sort of getting destroyed here is that as we come across lettering like this all we got to do is just remove it and stick another one on there and to go along with another example here now we've got a something probably a case went right across here and just tore uh, this lettering up so it's no big deal we don't need to repaint anything we'll just scrape this lettering off of there and uh, we'll just put something back now we do use some paint uh, but we only use that based upon the surface uh, that it's being applied okay to. so this is what I'm talking about any surface that is really smooth which is uh, most all the cases uh, even including these kinds of cases up here so if the surface is really smooth we'll put the vinyl lettering on it but the vinyl lettering is not for all surfaces so for example here uh, if you can probably tell here but the uh, surface of this speaker here this is a Yamaha it's one of the DSR cabinets uh, this is a fairly rough surface anything that's rough we will use an acrylic paint on it and this actually works out a lot better on a rough surface than it does on a smooth surface now all we have are just some small stencils we'll just put it on here and instead of actually using uh, instead of actually using paint uh, like in a paintbrush or even like a spray paint uh, what we use is uh, it's an acrylic paint it's white and it comes in a pen and all we've got to do is shake up the pen like you would a paint can we'll put the stencils down tape them down and then all we've got to do is take that pen and draw in the opening of the stencil area uh, it's really convenient you notice there's no overspray on anything over here which is very common with uh, using stencils with spray paint but I would highly recommend if, you're, if you need to do paint on your speakers or cabinets to uh, take a look at a um, paint pen uh, very inexpensive stuff rarely goes bad and it's extremely easy to apply okay then when it comes to um, la actually labeling uh, the gear we try to keep everything uh, well labeled uh, mics we know it's mics in there uh, we've got a rolling cabinet it's where we have two of our HDL 10 aids the RCF speakers uh, over here it's a personas board and right here is another personas board this is the larger one that's been in some past videos but we do like to keep everything labeled well enough so that the others that are working with us including volunteers they can look at the equipment and know and know exactly what they're looking at okay and another thing here with um labeling stuff on top which may seem a little odd because we do place cases on on top of these is when we are setting up for a show we can look down on the ground and we can see what's in the cabinets just from what's labeled on top so but on, on these the rcf and let's see the um xlr and power cables all have labeling on the lid so that it makes it great for when you walk along the stage you look down and see what's in that case Okay, the one thing uh, that you may not see here actually is our logo. And this is because of, over the years of doing this work, a lot of producers and organizers don't like a lot of, uh, if you will, they call it advertising, the sound company's advertising on, on their dime. 
meaning they don't want us to be advertising for our services all the time when we're paid to be there to provide services for them. So all the cases and the markings and thing are kept to a, to a very minimum. Just our, our company SL on it and just what it is, what's inside of it. Um, even something as simple as this, this is, this is easy here, front of house power. That's all that needs to be on there. Uh, some companies will splash their logos all on the side of it. Um, which is fine, you know, for them. I guess it's okay if, if their um, events don't, if they don't care about it. Uh, if you if you do want to put um, your logo logo on the side of your gear, that's fine. But just be prepared to have something maybe to put over it. Okay, this is just a little bonus thing here. Uh, after every show, uh, when the gear comes back, we check everything in. The uh, we open up the case. We'll throw in into each case. Um, a few of these, two to four, maybe even five of these. And these are some uh, desiccant uh, packages and they absorb moisture. And all of these cases that you see here that you've been seeing in this video, there's the mics, the communications, even the monitor rack, uh, the big cable rack at the bottom. Uh, all of these cases have a bunch of these in it. And we do that to greatly reduce the amount of moisture that's in a cabinet. So between jobs, when everything is, is boxed up, cased up, you don't want moisture in there because that can start introducing uh, potential rust. And also if there is a dust in the cabinet, which a lot of times there is, and if there's moisture, adding those two together can cause um, what they call dirty controls. Like when you move a knob or move a fader, sort of scratching. This greatly helps from that by keeping everything as dry as possible. And what we have here is a, uh, it's about a 40, maybe a 30 pound can, it's a five gallon can. After every show, all the old ones come out, all the old ones of these come out of the cases, we throw them away, and we put in new ones uh, for storage. All right, so hope this helps on the cable labeling and hopefully it'll give you some ideas.